Hi, I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com, and today's flute tip is on grounding. In today's flute tip, I'm going to reference Nina Asimakopoulos' book, The Virtuosic Flutist. It's a great book to have in your repertoire. The uh, technical aspects of flute playing that she has described, vibrato and breathing, uh, and different things about parts of your body and how you use them, are really, really well thought out and uh, planned for your, ex your exercises to use. It's a great book. And I recommend that you have it, that you read it. There's a lot of reading material, and then there's the exercises that you then apply. Both exercises to apply what you're reading about, and then in literature, real life literature. Today, Nina is talking about grounding. And with grounding, she's, she uh, emphasizes a couple aspects of grounding. Now, one is what you're thinking. It's how your stance, how you are connected to the ground. Do you have a nice, solid uh, playing stance that allows you to be flexible, be relaxed, but also solidly in place? I have seen so many people uh, play for me and they are uh, really uncomfortable. Their feet are close together, which is not a solid stance for us to play. But if we think of our um, feet maybe being a shoulder width apart, uh, whatever's comfortable for you so that you are standing straight and tall so that when you uh, breathe, which is another aspect of this grounding is your breathing, that that breath comes from below and goes all the way up. You feel that you are a solid rock right here uh, as you stand. It's, there's nothing that's going to tip you over or get you off balance. You're right there. Uh, another aspect, so it's the breath energy. She calls it breath energy. How you're taking that breath. Are you opening up your sinus cavity? Are you opening up your mouth? Are you opening your throat? And are you filling up your stomach and ribcage so that your stance allows you to fill up and then uh, have that air pressure, the support that is ne so necessary to have the sound that we're all looking for. She goes into a lot of detail about your vocal tract, the different parts of your throat and your mouth and how it all works together. And that's something that you can read about. I won't go into it right at the moment. And then uh, another important aspect is your finger engagement. Do you keep your fingers right over their keys and are they light? Uh, that's something that I think a lot of us uh, probably miss when you're playing and sometimes teachers miss finding this in their students but are their fingers really grabbing a hold of those keys uh, we all can see when the fingers fly up and we tell our students to keep them low keep them on their keys so that the pad of your finger is on the hole pretty much in the middle for as best best you can manage that that's where you want them to be but are they light our thumb has to hold the flute up here, so there's a little pressure there. But other than that, my fingers are very light. They're relaxed, they're loose, and they can move uh, with, with agility. Tight fingers are going to come through tight hands and arms and a tight throat and come up into your tone. It's all, you're all connected. It's all connected in there. So if you want to have the sound you're looking for, the fingers need to be loose. If you are having trouble with that, I would go this, I would use this exercise that I'm going to play for you in a minute in their grounding exercise. But also I learned uh, way back in my youth how to play with light fingers by using Tafanel and Gobert's number one or number two. Um, that's this exercise. <laughs> Um, 
because it's scaled, you don't have to think about it. You work on your fingers, learn to keep them light and uh, not any pressure at all, nothing. Your fingers are never, never tired. Okay. Now she takes, uh, you read the exercise that Nina is talking about, and then you go to the exercise itself. And she tells you, okay, here's a couple things to be thinking about in this grounding. Your stance, which we've talked about, make sure you're thinking about the different aspects of your body as you stand and how relaxed they are. Do you have a firm, um, rooted position attached to the ground and coming straight up? And then do you have light fingers? When you take your breath, do you take a real one? And I think that um, I think that she says this in here, where if you need to learn how to take a real breath, stop, take the length of time you need to, take that breath, and then come back in. That's the best way to learn how to breathe properly: is to stop, come to a full stop, come back in, and then resume playing. Now. The fun part of this exercise, you've got all that, you're, you're thinking about your breathing, you're thinking about your open uh, cavity in your mouth, your open throat, your stance, your fingers. And now, in order to do this exercise, she says to use a stomach huh, huh, as you play, um, accenting your different notes. Now, I will tell you that if you work on this, you're going to have great abs. It's a strong exercise for your abdominal muscles and playing it for a little bit, you can get a little bit tired in the stomach muscle area, um, which says maybe do some more setups. I know I need to do a few more. Okay, so I'm going to play the exercise as it stands um, and then I will show you, okay, here's what she says to do, just so you know um, what it looks like. It's it basically, uh, this is in the key of C. And so on, you're going all the way up, always adding at the top another note. So it's in triplets, that's the exercise itself. Now, she says to I'll read what she says. Apply an accent to each note with an abdominal pressure pulse, as if saying, huh, okay, for each note. And that's where it becomes a whole lot of fun. Breathe anywhere that you want. Keep your fingers close. Um, and then be in tone with what you're playing. Think about it. Don't let it just, uh, you know, I'm thinking about supper and I'm thinking about what's going on in class and my homework that's due. Uh, think about what you're doing, your stance, your fingers, your throat, your vo uh, cavity in your mouth, and uh, this pulse that you're doing. So, and then she says, of course, play these in all major and minor keys. So you transpose this exercise. I'll keep it in the key of C for right now. So I'm grounded, standing firm on my abdominals. I'm taking that breath. My cavity is open, my throat is open, my fingers are light. It's a longer exercise. It's just a, a page or two thirds of a page. But I can tell you that just after that, my abdominals are a little bit tired. It's a lot of work for that. But as I do that, each time I'm using my stomach muscles, do that, ha, huh, ha, huh, I'm keeping this open and it's expanding my tone. I hear it just working on it right now. I hear that I keep, I'm thinking about this. It's light, it's open and it's making my tone get bigger and fatter through here. So I, I love this exercise. 
If you haven't gotten Nina's book yet, it's available both in a digital copy and in hard copy. So you can, if you're all over the world and you need a digital copy, you can do that either from Nina's website or you can get it from any online retailer such as Flute World. Uh, this should be in your arsenal of technique books. It's great. There's some ways of thinking about this that are not maybe the traditional ways. So it gives you a new way to look at these exercises. And this grounding, I haven't heard too many uh, you know, our technical gurus in the flute world talking about this. And I think it's a wonderful aspect to think about and to work on. So get this book, work on this exercise, do your sit-ups, you'll be happy. And hear your tone get better and better as you do it. That's today's flute tip. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe, comment below, and share it with your friends.